Hello, this is Robbie Mitchell here from Head in the Cloud Development. Today I'm going to walk you through creating a user event script that will automatically bill fulfillments. This really is going to be short and sweet. This is kind of a common request we get at Head in the Cloud, so I thought I would take just a bit of time to show you how easy it is to automatically create invoices when sales orders get fulfilled. For our development environment, we'll be using WebStorm. We'll be coding in TypeScript and uploading to NetSuite using the Head in the Cloud uploader. The HITC Uploader Bundle in NetSuite is totally free and open for anyone to use. If you're not familiar with the process, I recommend you start by watching one of my other YouTube videos first, which covers setting up this building environment. If you search on YouTube for NetSuite SuiteScript 2.1 Demo, you'll see a handful of mine. I've done demo videos in Windows 11, Windows 10, and on Mac. So whatever your environment is, there should be a demo that shows you how to use our uploader. That being said, if you're not a fan of TypeScript, don't worry, I'll still show the resulting JavaScript code here as well. And of course, the point of this video is not to demonstrate TypeScript or the uploader. The focus is on demonstrating how the user event script works here. So finally, don't worry if you can't read every little bit of code you see clearly on your screen, as you can download all the related code from our website here. Okay, let's get to it. First, let's look at what our goal is here. Let me go to my list of orders to fulfill. So the idea is that when I fulfill one of these sales orders, our script will automatically go in and bill the sales order as well. So in other words, when I created this item fulfillment, we would want this invoice to automatically be created as well. So our goal seems very simple on the surface level. Let's dive in and see how it goes. So here's my project in WebStorm. Let's start by creating a new TypeScript file. I'm going to call it item fulfillment user event. And we can begin with our script header comment here. And we'll start with just our entry points import, as well as the log module. For our entry point, we're going to use the after submit function. And the first thing I always like to do in an after submit function is to log the context type in the record ID. So we'll see something every time anybody saves a record here. And for our purposes here, we only care about the creation of an item fulfillment. But for testing, I'm going to also enable it for edit mode. This way, if something doesn't work the first time, or if I just want to edit and save that fulfillment I created a minute ago, we can test it that way. It just makes it a little bit easier and faster than creating and deleting fulfillments every time we want to test it. But here I'll mention that if you are using pick, pack, and ship, then your scenario might be a little bit more complicated. You might have to use the ship event here if you want it to wait until fulfillments are shipped before it creates the invoice. But for this demo, let's start simple. We're going to do the invoice upon fulfillment creation. So to create an invoice, the first thing we need to know is what sales order is being fulfilled. So we'll read that in from the created from field. Uh, 
So the next thing we're going to do is look up the status of the sales order. This is just one check we do is to see if it's ready to be billed. In other words, if we're just fulfilling a part of a large order, we probably want to wait until the order is totally fulfilled. So for this, we need the search module. If you work with transfer orders, you could also use this to look up the type of the created from transaction because you don't want to try and bill a transfer order. And anytime we do a lookup, it's good to log the results you get back. So now, if the status of the sales order is pending billing, then we'll continue to do our billing. So to create the invoice, now we need the record module. So here we use the record.transform method to transform the sales order into an invoice. And then let's just save the invoice. And one tip, unless you have a reason not to, you probably will want to use this ignore mandatory fields option. Otherwise, Someday far in the distant, when someone decides to make some new field mandatory, your script will break. This prevents that. So once we've saved the invoice, let's log the ID of the invoice created. And this is really the gist of it. It's, it's pretty simple. Again, what we're doing is we're looking up what sales order the fulfillment is created from, and then we're transforming that sales order into an invoice. So let's upload this and try it out. So I'm going to create the user event script and deploy it to item fulfillments. So to test, if I just go and edit and save this fulfillment that I created a few minutes ago, let's see what happens. Okay, now I'll check my script execution logs. Okay, so we see we edited the fulfillment. Here's the values of the sales order. It was pending billing. So we build the sales order, and this is the ID of the invoice created. So now if I look at the sales order, it's now build, 
and we see here is my invoice. Okay, great. So far, so good. Step one is complete. But now, what if we need to fulfill an order that has a credit card authorization on it? In other words, what if the order needs to generate a cash sale rather than an invoice? Well, to find out, let's try fulfilling one and see what happens. Okay, so we got an error on line 22 of our script. It says that is not a valid record transformation. That's because we obviously can't create an invoice for this sales order. We need to create a cash sale instead. So we could try to be really smart and figure out in advance whether an order wants to be a cash sale or an invoice. Or we can take the easy route, which is to try the most common type first, and if that fails, to try the other one. Let's do that. So all we need to do is put a try catch around creating our invoice. Now we'll upload this and try this out. So to test, to test, I'm just going to edit and save the fulfillment we just created. And then let's take a look at the sales order. So the sales order is build, and there's our cash sale. Now, of course, the cash sale creation could fail as well. So it's good to do another try catch here around that. And if that fails, then we're not going to try anything else. We're just going to log that it failed for whatever random reason. That way we can see the reason that it failed in the execution logs, but it won't prevent our fulfillment from being created. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove edit mode here because we're done testing that. So now what would it be like if you do use pick, pack, and ship? Let me set up an example and I'll show you. To start with, I'm just going to make a copy of this sales order that we fulfilled and build a minute ago. And now when we fulfill it, I'm going to set the status to packed. So now when I created this fulfillment, let's take a look and see if anything happened. So the sales order is still pending fulfillment status. Our script didn't do anything because of our pending billing condition. It saw that the status was pending fulfillment and it didn't do anything else. So what we want to happen is when we click this mark shipped button, we want our auto billing script to run then. So what we can do is say or context.type equals context.userEvent.ship. The ship event is clicking this mark shipped button. So let's upload this and try it out. Okay, so the fulfillment is now shipped. Let's see if our sales order got billed. It did. If we check our script execution logs, 
we see the ship event ran, our sales order was detected as pending billing because the sales order switches status once it is fulfilled, meaning it is shipped, and with that we created our invoice. And as promised, let's take a look at the resulting JavaScript for all of this. So again, this is the TypeScript file. The JavaScript looks very similar now that we're using API 2.1. We say the create or ship, the lookup here, status check, and our two try catches. Really, it's just the, the top and bottom that look different. So this concludes our auto billing script tutorial. Please get in touch if you have any questions or feedback. Otherwise, we'll see you at Sweet World. Thanks for watching.